the implants very close one to another. You can't just fit this kind of buttons. You'll have the same problem with transfills. Small diameter of the screw channel, you can close it quite good. Hi, welcome back to Anika Dental Show, where we discuss interesting cases and new procedures in the field of dentistry. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and follow us to stay tuned up to date. With us today, as always, is Dr. Yaniv. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Amazing. How are you? Great. Can be better. Uh, good to hear. Let's see what you... It always can be better, but... No, no. The, the top of the uh, can be. Uh, yeah. Let's say positive. <laughs> let's stay positive. <laughs> let's stay positive. What did you bring for us today? Today, we have a case that... It's not such a difficult case, but you can see a couple of things very interesting in this case. First of all, we have uh, crowns that were made a long time ago. And you can see the difference in the technology between, uh, let's say, let's call it the CADCAM era and 15 years ago when uh, you didn't have all those technologies uh, in the the form of the crowns in everything that, uh, how it was done. And the second thing is we get a patient with implants and crowns and we need to take impressions and we need to, to make new bridge, new crowns, everything new. We, we don't need to add implants and we want to use all of the implants that we have. But in this case, the implants were very close one to another. So we had a problem. We, we couldn't even take impressions. We couldn't fit this kind of abutments uh, on both of the implants at the same time. So this is what we want to show today. And we had one bridge on four uh, implants, on four multi-units, and another bridge on partial bar and uh, partial overdenture. Uh, the object on the right side, the bridge on the left side. You can see the angulation of the implants. Uh, they're very buccal inclined. So the screw channels go to, to the buccal part of the crown. And the, that tooth is, is lost tooth, right? It's rotten? No. No? Not a rotten tooth? No, no, no. I mean, no, the one that is missing. Ah, the one that's yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the one that's one. missing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you need to right? extract the tooth. Mm -hmm. uh, don't know why it's here. Probably extracted and placed an implant. This is what we got. We have a bar on two multi units and small uh, partial denture, uh, over denture on the, this bar. We have a four crown bridge on four multi-units and four implants, and we have two-unit bridge, two premolars on two implants, and you can already see that the implants are very close one to another. So we know we'll have a problem in the impression-taking process. That's a lot of metal we took out. Yeah, that we took out uh, at one time uh, and arranged it very beautifully. <laughs> you changed the multi-units. First of all, what we did is we changed the multi-units because the multi-units that were used uh, probably we can't get them anymore and we don't know what type of multi-units they were. So we changed to new ones that we know what type of multi-unit and we can make all the construction on those multi-units. And though the new multi-units fit the old implants perfectly. Yeah, they fit we, because we know what type of implant we had. So we can uh, choose the multi-units for this platform, this type of implant. So we chose four multi-units uh, were placed here, two there, and here we took out the bridge that was here, and we'll extract the tooth, it's just a root in the jaw. And we'll make a small bridge with a cantilever to restore the, the premolar that we'll extract. You can see here the scan abutments, all these scan abutments uh, fit it perfectly, except those two, yeah. These are the interesting scan abutments because when you have a very close proximity between two implants, you can't just fit this kind of buttons. You'll have the same problem with transfills. If you want to take impression with the open tray or closed tray, or doesn't really matter. You can't take impression here. The, the implants very close one to another. And in here, you want to restore on both of the, of the implants also. So what we did is uh, we took part of this kind of abutment out. We just cut this kind of abutment and we scan with one full scan abutments and one uh, scan abutments that we cut 
uh, not in half, but somewhere, I think, uh, one fourth of the scan abutments we, do, of the scan abutment we took out. Uh, and still in the program, in uh, Exocado 3 shape, in the modeling program, you can use this scan abutment. Uh, it will work fine. Really? It doesn't matter if you cut the plastic, it will still function? Yeah. Even with scan abutments that are made from metal or anything, it's fine. It's <laughs> not a problem. You can take out part of the scan abutment. You need to always to remember that it's one of the options that you have. Uh, sometimes when you, when you make uh, single crowns on a single implant, the scan abutment is very, the height of the scan abutment is very large, is, is very big. And if the angulation of the scan abutment is incorrect, you'll have a problem with the proximal tooth. And you want to take out part of the scan abutment, to cut part of the scan abutment. It's also a, a possibility. You can cut the scan abutment and still take impression and scan, and in the program, you, you won't have any problem in the designing process. When we cut those scan abutments, we don't throw, throw them away. We keep those scan abutments that we, we took out part of the scan abutment, and we save them for the next time that we have a similar case when we need to use the scan abutment when that we took a part of the scan abutment off. That's I I always have in the draw some scan abutments that I took part of. That's a, that's a clever solution. In here you can see the old multi units and the scan abutments that we used. Those two old multi units were were very close one to another, and this is what was left of the scan abutment. Uh, the other scan abutments are full without any problem. And here you can see the new bridges versus the old bridges. Uh, first of all, the design of the screw channels, the design of uh, the bridge itself. You can see now with the cut cam, with the materials, with the new technologies, what is possible to be done, what uh, small screw channels, what uh, delicate work we have, and versus the pre cad uh, design that the screw channel is about, I, I think, four, one fourth of the, the, the crown. Uh, in here, you can close the screw channel and you don't need to use any angular multi unit. You can restore just the screw channel and it's fine. Uh, in here, it's a problem. You know that uh, it's very hard to store with the same color the uh, the screw channel. Yeah, it, it looks five times smaller. Something like this, yes. This is the plastic. Oh, so you mounted the temporary bridge and closed it with plastic pins. Yeah, exactly. We mounted the temporary bridges. We want to make sure that everything's fine. Uh, we have one big bridge, one small bridge, and one bridge with cantilever. We can see that in the occlusion, everything is fine. Because we have such proximity with, between the implants, we did want to leave some space between uh, the crowns so the patient could clean between the implants, so food won't stuck. And even with the high angulation between the implants and the buccally inclined screw channel, we still can uh, avoid using angulated multi-unit because in here, Due to the small diameter of the screw channel, you can close it quite good and you won't see the aesthetic problem. If you had a big screw channel, it will be a problem in here. So we left it like this. If we did want to use an angular, an angular multi-unit, we had a problem because you don't have enough gingival height in here. So you will see the metal of the multi-unit. Those two are the close proximity ones yeah. on the lower jaw. You can Without see that the, the, the a little bit of the healing, and we have a bridge with a one cantilever tooth and two screw channels. You can see that because the screw channels are small, uh, the whole screw channel fits in the occlusal part of the crown. I don't really see the screw channel. Uh, you can see that they're not closed. It's something something there, and the screw channels that were here also we didn't want to use angled multi-unit because if you'll use angled multi-unit almost half of the crown will be the multi-unit itself so you don't really have any choice here you have buccal inclined implants and you need to make the best out of it you, you already with the smallest multi-units you can see them out 
uh, peeping out of the gingiva. Uh, we just close the small screw channels. You make the screw channels as small as possible. So we'll use as less as possible uh, composite material. And this way you won't see the screw channels uh, in the long run or uh, minimally we'll see them. This white material is composite? Yes, yeah, composite. This is the end result? Yeah, this is the end result. Uh, probably the patient is waiting to change his frontal teeth. Yeah, I just so wanted to <laughs> say, <laughs> he's waiting for, for the next That's what they want. Appointment. They want to have white crowns and then when he'll have a problem in the frontal teeth and change them also uh, into whiter crowns. So right now it's like something. Thank you very much. It You're was welcome. really interesting to see how technology changed. And thank you for being with us today. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and follow us. We hope you found this case interesting and see you next time.